Um, so um, there was some discussion about partitioning you were talking about. How do you decide how big the block is? So, so one of the bits here is what goes into hardware and what goes into software? You know, now that there's a flow to take C++ and make hardware, okay, what, what of my, I have this huge program that does wonderful stuff, which pieces of it do I put into hardware? How do I decide which things should go into hardware and which things really should stay in the software? And often, sometimes that's uh, very easy, right? The things that, geez, we're not sure if this system should uh, perform this function or that function, keep it in software, right? That's something you can do firmware upgrades and so on and so forth. Whereas other bits that are so, you know, uh, they don't run very quickly on a microprocessor. There's something you could have dedicated hardware. You know every system's going to need to do those. Absolutely put those in hardware. If, if you can implement them in less space with a custom unit, then it will take up space in, in your uh, embedded core microprocessor, and that space might be memory or, or execution time. Um, then absolutely generate custom hardware for that. So, so we go through this path of marketing says we want a, a cell phone that can uh, fly or you know, has um, Bluetooth or green tooth or whatever. You know, so marketing comes up with some kind of crazy spec. You need to uh, first see if it can be built, right? So you, you write up something in an executable language that can model the math. Yes, this, this can actually be calculated. Then there's this partitioning task that um, somebody needs to decide. I mean, if you, all you have was a high level synthesis tool, you do this partitioning by, well, let me take this block, synthesize it and see how big the area is. Ooh, wow, that's huge, okay. Let me keep that on the microprocessor. Oh, this other bit gets really small. So you could iteratively make the decision of what goes down the hardware path and what goes down the software path by, by uh, you know, iterative application of a high-level synthesis tool or use some of the, the functional knowledge that you have. Hey, this is set up stuff. This, this is something I want to change with the device as delivered. So I'm obviously going to take that down the software path and, and put the other bits down the hardware path. So the high-level synthesis area is the area where you take your original C code um, and take it through, you've partitioned into hardware and you synthesize generate RTL. Um, and again, you're doing this in such a way that you can refine the hardware interfaces, right? So you've mapped this, you're not saying it's AXI, you're saying it's speaking with the generic payload in TLM. And then when you're at this step, you say, you know what, I'm gonna bind that generic payload to AXI and it's AXI 3.0 because it just came out and it's really sexy, you know, or it's OCP 2.0 because I'm stuck with this, like, you know, whatever it is. So, so you do that binding late and let the tools do that for you. Um, and, you know, you get the implementation that does, does the task that you need. 